Turn with me, please, to Romans, the fourth chapter. Romans 4. We've been on a, a series for some weeks now. We're calling Exceedingly Growing Faith. And uh, this is one of our main texts here, in Romans chapter 4, beginning about verse 19. Talking about Abraham, who is one of the greatest examples of faith in the Word of God. We're called the children of Abraham by faith in Jesus. Said he, Abraham, being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. Now we've gone over this uh, more than once, but you see it so clearly right here. What's the key? to being not weak, not considering your problem. You can't focus on, think about, talk about your lack, your symptoms, your marriage problem, child problem, whatever the case might be. If you think and talk that problem night and day, you will be weak in faith. You won't be able to escape it. But you don't have to consider that. Even though it's there, you don't have to mind it. You don't have to think about it all the time. You don't have to talk about it all the time. You can consider Him. You can look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. You can remind yourself of what He told you about these things. He considered not his his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. I mean, if he looked at himself and he looked at her, he looked at their age, she couldn't conceive when she was a young woman, then he's going to be discouraged, right? Right? He's going to think this can't happen. This is not happening. So he didn't look at that. (laughs) He didn't look at that. He considered what God told him. I have made you a father of many nations. Hallelujah. And he agreed with God and he called those things that be not as though they were. He started calling himself a father of many nations before they had one child, he and Sarah. That's how faith does. Faith shouts while the walls are still up. Faith thanks God for for healing when you're hurting worse than you ever have before. Faith thanks God for meeting all my needs when you just got some new bills you didn't know anything about. You got they're piled up on the table and you think you don't have a clue how you're gonna pay all this. But faith thanks God and calls every bill paid and every need met. Call my body healed. You're not gonna make it very long like that. Yeah. With a long life, he'll satisfy me and show me his salvation. Faith doesn't talk and think according to what it sees and feels. We walk by faith, not by sight. We look not at the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen. These are not just nice phrases. This is how you're supposed to live. You a faith person? Yes. Do you want to please God? Yes. Then you got to be a faith person. Yes. Do you want to overcome? Yes. Then you got to be a faith person. Only yes. way. <laughs> <laughs> what else did he say? He considered not his own body, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, but he was what? Back up to verse 19. Or excuse me, verse 20. He was what? Staggered not. Now notice he considered not, so he staggered not. That's right. That word stagger could also be translated waver. Waver. Why do people have trouble uh, not wavering? Because they're still considering the wrong thing. If you, do, if you want to not waver, you've got to not consider. It's all right here in these two verses, or two or three. It's all right here. He staggered not because he considered not. And that made him not weak in faith. But 
He staggered not the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, what God had promised, he, God, was able also to perform. He didn't see it. He didn't feel it. Nobody around him knew how it could happen, but God told him. He heard from the Father, and so he considered that instead of all these symptoms, instead of all these contradictions. It's up to us what we consider, so it's up to us whether our faith grows or wanes. You can feed fear, it'll get stronger. You can feed faith, it'll get stronger. Whatever you feed, get stronger. So let's starve our doubts. Let's starve our fears until they get so weak they don't bother us anymore. And let's feed our faith. That's what this studio is about. I may start off the broadcast. Hello, class. (laughs) It's time to feed our faith. Is that right? (laughs) Your faith needs to be fed every day. Is that right? On a regular basis. That's why you need to read your chapter every day. Anybody been reading your chapter? Ecclesiastes? Hmm? Yeah, for the last last bit. Some people might say, well, why? Why are we reading that? (laughs) It's the Word of God. It's inspired. A thing to keep in mind is all of it is talking about under the sun. Stuff down here. He's not talking about the kingdom of God. He's not talking about spirit. We might say flesh. And everything he's saying is right about flesh. I mean vanity of vanities. But it's not vain to serve God. Amen. Amen. And thank God we got revelation of new covenant and we got the Holy Spirit. We can walk in the Spirit, live in the Spirit, and what's done at the direction of the Spirit is not in vain. But anyway, you need to feed your faith with that chapter, with other things. And you know, when you find something that really fed you and stirred you up, you were in a service or you watched a broadcast or whatever it was, and it really ministered something to you, uh, get, get that uh, message, you know, get that file or that CD or DVD, listen to it again. Yes. Feed on it again. Because if it fed you one time, it'll feed you again. The Bible said faith comes by hearing and hearing. By the word. And, hearing. And, and man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. How many have eaten potatoes more than once? <laughs> more than 20 times. <laughs> More than a thousand times. And yet, if you eat a potato today, it will help you. It will strengthen you and minister to you just like potatoes did back in the 70s (laughs) or 60s. Is that right? Well, see, the Word of God, what food is to your body, the Word of God is to your spirit. And so when you find something that really ministers to you, don't say, I heard that, I got that. No, eat it again. Eat it again. Eat it again. That's one of the reasons why we invest so much into the word supply. Is because you want to get these things into people's hands and lives where they can feed on them. Many, many times. Now, uh, he said he's not weak in faith, but he was strong in faith. And I want us to go over now. You're right there in in Romans 4, but go right over to the 10th chapter, please. The 10th chapter. He wavered not because he considered not. He didn't focus on it, the problems. He focused on what the Lord told him. In Romans 10 and 6, notice this. The righteousness which is of faith speaks on this wise. Say not in your heart. Everybody say heart. Heart. So you can speak in your heart 
without making any sound uh, audibly, physically. Don't, he said, don't say in your heart who will ascend into heaven to bring, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who will descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh, the, nigh me, we'd say near or close. The word is close to you. Did you know the answer is close? Yes. The miracle is close. Yes. The healing is close yes. to everybody. How close is it? It's closer than you think. How close is it? Well, let's back up. He's talking about salvation. He's talking about being born again. We're in Romans 10, 8. What comes next? Romans 10, 9, and 10. Don't get much more salvation than this. People, are there many people in the world that are lost. How close are they to salvation? He was a man, they look like they're a long way from God to me. Well, that may be, but how quickly could they get to God? How quickly could they experience the miracle of the new birth? Where all things pass away and all things have become new, where you are made the righteousness of God in Christ. How close are they? He said the word is close to you. Even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Did you know Paul was a faith preacher? (laughs) You must say that word of faith much. I don't know about that. Watch out. out. Do you know who you're talking about? (laughs) Word of faith is right here where Paul preached. Verse 9, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, which is action, and you shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. How many believe this? You believe it 100%. Do you believe it? You do this, you will experience the miracle of the new birth, which is a far greater miracle if you want to compare them than a healing or a deliverance or a financial provision. Why? Because that's dealing with things that already exist. Repair work on an existing structure. Moving some funds that are already in the earth. But the new birth is taking a dead spirit and recreating it in the likeness and image of God. Hallelujah, they will exist throughout eternity as a son of the living God. This is no small thing. How did it happen? How quickly can it happen? Well, every one of us that got, have been born again, we were there. We know what happened. Quickly, you, you believe it in your heart, you say it with your mouth, you mean business with God. Here he comes. Hallelujah. Here he will be. You won't have to wait on him. He will be right there. And the Spirit of God will work in you what you could not do for yourself and what nobody else could do for you either. Well, that's not just true concerning the new birth. That's that's true concerning uh, all manner of things that God does in human beings' lives. It works by the same principle. You believe it in your heart and you say it with your mouth. We just got through reading about Abraham. What did, did he believe it in his heart? What God told him? That his seed was going to be like the stars for multitude, like the sand on the seashore. And did he say it with his mouth? Yeah, he changed his name. Is that right? So that he'd have it in his mouth every day. He, they got no children, he and Sarah. They got no natural children, and, and every day he's saying, I'm a father of many nations. They'd come and say, uh, uh, Abraham, uh, so this is it. He said, No, 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 no. Abraham. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Abraham, we might say right. in, in Arkansas and South Missouri. Right. <laughs> Abraham. Yes. But, but either way, Abram? Uh uh-uh. uh. No, 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 no. 
Abraham. That's right. Yeah. 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 Glory. Which means something. Father yes. of many nations. Yeah. Is he saying it? He's got everybody saying it. <laughs> Don't let people call you broke. Don't let people call you down. Don't let people call you victim. Don't let people call you sick. Don't let people call you terminal. Don't accept it. Now, they can say what they want to in their own time and place, but don't accept these titles, even if it's completely different than what they see and feel. You call those things that be not as though they were. And you say you give yourself a new name. It's not my bad knee, it's my healed knee. Oh, I got that tennis elbow. No, I got a healed elbow. Got a bad heart. No, I got a healed heart. I call my heart healed. And you can rename your car. It's not a Ford, it's a paid for. <laughs> what model is that? It's a paid for. What style house is that? It's a paid for. It's a paid for style. You ought to get one. They're great. See, walking by sight, they're going to rejoice after it happens. And until then, hope, wish, imagine, but no faith. But faith calls it that way when it looks like there's no way. That's how it works. Well, when you believed you received Jesus to become the righteousness of God in Christ, did you look like the righteousness of God in Christ or feel like the righteousness or holiness of Christ? No, but you went ahead and confessed him as Lord anyway. And when you believe in your heart and you say it with your mouth, it opens the door. It gives the Lord access. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. He said, verse 9, that if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Verse 10, for with the heart. Now, this is the third time, a fourth time, he's mentioned the heart. He mentioned it in verse 6 about speaking in your heart. Verse 8, he said, the word is close to you in your mouth and your heart. Verse 9, if you'll believe in your heart. And verse 10, with the heart, man believes. Everybody said out loud, with the heart, with the heart. Man, believes. man believes. Man refers to male or female. Talking about you, me, all of us. Said out loud, with the heart, with the heart. I, believe. I believe. I believe with the heart. This is very significant. You don't, there's other parts of your being you don't believe with. <laughs> you believe with your heart. And, oh, you, you, you're going to shout about some of these things today. I'm telling you, I'm stirring the pot, getting ready to, and I can smell it from here. It's, it's good. It's good stuff. You, you're going to want two scoops of this. <laughs> the devil's such a liar and, and some lies that have hindered people, we're going to unmask them just in the next few minutes and it's going to take away the power of it to hinder you. Faith is of the heart. Heart. Now when he says heart, what's he talking about? Even, uh, don't be too quick to answer that. Even uh, those who are the most studied uh, in the body of Christ have differing opinions about what the heart is versus the mind, versus the spirit, versus the soul. I've studied it some, and the th one of the things that's interesting is some of the words, the same words are translated two or three different ways. I mean, same word might be translated heart, soul, or spirit. And it's the same Greek or Hebrew word. It's translated three or four different ways. So don't, don't be too adamant until you get further into this. But let's keep it simple today. Hmm? For practical purposes. When we say heart, we're not talking about your physical blood pump. 
You can't believe God with your physical heart any, any more than you could believe God with your kidneys or your lungs or any physical uh, organ. That's physical. And yet, it's graphic. What is the heart to your body? The heart is the primary organ. I mean, it stops, you stop. Right? I mean, it is what sends life. Was it blood? Same thing. The life is in the blood. It sends life. Somebody might say, well, it's the brain's the most important part. You cut off the life flow to the brain, boom, just seconds, it shuts down. And no, the, the heart, out of the heart flows life. Go to Proverbs 4, and you'll see this same thing here. We're getting into a big subject. Can you tell? But you can handle it. Proverbs 4, this is a very familiar passage of Scripture to many, but oh, there's so much light, so much truth here. Proverbs 4, and I believe it's 20, we'll start there. He said, My son, attend to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. Do what? Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them where? In the midst of your heart. For their life to those that find them, their health to all their flesh. Keep going. Keep your what? Your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. That's true physically. It's true spiritually. The life flow of the physical body comes through the heart. But there has to be spirit life or, the, or there's nothing to make the heart beat. What makes the heart beat? What makes the lungs breathe? What gives the, the brain its light? Well, it's life. Life. Where does life come from? First Peter refers to the hidden man of the heart. That phrase is used. The hidden man of the heart. This is the part of your being that you believe God with. Now you're right here in Proverbs 4. Go back to the third chapter. Maybe on the same place there. Close by in verse 5. Anybody remember this? Yes. Trust in the Lord. What? All. With all your heart. With what? Heart. To, to say believe God with the heart. Have faith with the heart. Trust with the heart. Similar things. What part of your being do you trust with? Your heart. What part of your being do you believe with? Your heart. Your heart. Notice, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Now here we're seeing a very clear distinction between heart and understanding. You don't believe God with your understanding. Now we're getting somewhere. You do believe God with your heart. Your heart is not your understanding. If it is, how could you say, trust in the Lord with your heart, but don't lean to your understanding? The understanding is different. So when he's talking about heart, he's not talking about your mind. He's not talking about your thinking. He's not talking about knowledge. He's not talking about understanding. Let me read you another couple of things about your heart. We won't take the time to go, go through all the scriptures, but I've got multiple scriptures for each one of these. Your heart is the part of you that can grieve and sorrow or rejoice and be glad. Being glad is not just mental. You go, I've thought it all through. 
and now I'm glad. <laughs> glad, glad is not a deduction. <laughs> you're not glad with your head. You're glad with your heart. Amen. Sorrow or grief. You're not just hurting in your head. It's your heart. And, and your heart is the part of you that can be broken or elated, yeah. ecstatic. Yes, sir. Hmm? Yes, sir. Over the moon? Yes, sir. It's not a mental condition. <laughs> it's a heart. Is that right? Amen. Yes. Full of joy, overflowing, Amen. glad, not mental, not head. Your heart can be hard. Yes, it can be. Or it can be humble. Yes. Right? That's not a condition of mind. No. I'm just saying some things to help us identify what part of our being we're talking about. But I think this is, this is clear. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean to your own understanding. Now, uh, go with me to James, please. James, first chapter. Glory to God. With the heart, man believes. It'd be do, do us well to meditate on this the rest of the week. Just as we think about it, uh, with the heart, I believe. I believe with my heart. I believe with my heart. Well, before we, before we go to James, just put up Mark 11, 23 on the screen. You don't, you don't have to turn there. I know a lot of you could quote it. Mark 11, 23, Jesus said, Verily I say to you, whoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and what? Doubt. Shall not doubt where? In where? In his, In his heart. But shall believe. Well, we already know what that is. In his heart. With the heart man believes. We've got scripture for that. But shall, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe in his heart that those things will come to pass. He'll have whatever he says. So some people have said, well, y'all are just that confess it, possess it bunch. That, that blab it, grab it bunch. Well, no. Jesus didn't just say you'd have it if you said it. Did he? He didn't just, people take a half of a phrase and say something the Lord didn't say. He did say you would have what you said if, don't skip that part, if you don't doubt in your heart, but you believe in your heart. So people can say all kinds of stuff they don't believe. And that don't mean you're going to have what you said. Well, I said it and it didn't come to pass. Well, you're telling off on yourself. Right? Right? You either didn't believe it to start with, or you started off good and got to where you didn't believe it, or something. You quit somewhere along the line. Right? Don't blame it on God. Don't doubt, if you won't doubt in your heart, but believe in your heart that those things which He says shall come to pass, He'll have whatever He says. Everybody say, in your heart. In your heart. In your heart which is not the same as your own understanding. Go to James now, please. James 1, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him stay dumb. <laughs> huh? <laughs> what? Yes. No, you have not. Because you ask not. Oh, man, we need to learn this lesson. Do not assume you know this. I'm looking at the folks in the back. Do not assume you know this. And in the front and in the middle and on both sides. And I'm, and I'm reminding myself. What? It's so easy to get in a situation where you're going, ah, I just don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know, man. I, I, I don't understand. I don't understand. Shut up. <laughs> and ask. Yes. Yes, yes. Ask for wisdom. It is so simple. 
But people will go through months and years of torment and go, I tried everything I knew to do. I talked to everybody and finally we just had to pray about it. <laughs> oh boy, it has come to that. <laughs> finally, we just had to pray about it. What if we'd have led with that? Yeah. What if we'd have started with that? Yeah. Might it have been possible to prevent and avoid yeah. months of torment? Yeah. We need to be quick. Yeah. Somebody say quick. quick. We need to be quick to ask for wisdom. You're in a situation you don't know what to do. It just it, How long does it take? Lord, I'm asking you right now. Give me wisdom for this. Give me understanding on this. Show me what to do. I'm asking it in Jesus' name. I believe I receive it. Yes. Amen. Most of the time when you pray that, you're not going to know any more when you get through praying than you did. But we walk by faith. Is that right? So now, every time something reminds us of what we need to deal with, what do we do? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord for showing us what to do. Thank you for giving me wisdom, giving us understanding about this. And if you're in faith, you're not in fear. If you're in faith, you're not in vexation and torment. You're calming everybody else. Oh, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. The Lord will show us what to do. The Lord will show us. We'll get there. Has he not helped us 10,000 times before? He will show us. He will help us. This is going to be all right. And as surely as you talk like that and you believe that lie, next thing you know, ding. Ding, the light bulb goes off and you're going, oh, well, of course. Yeah. And you know what to do. And you know which way to go. It's supernatural. It's revelation. But you have not. Because you ask not, because you think you can do it by yourself and you don't need any help. and You're going to exhaust all of your resources until you finally have to pray. <laughs> and now, let's stop doing that. Yeah. Amen. If any man la lacks wisdom, do what? Ask. Let him ask of God. And what will happen? He gives to everybody. Aren't you glad he don't just laugh at you and go, you are one dumb guy. <laughs> you need some wisdom. <laughs> Look at, no, no, he won't upbraid you. He won't make fun of you. You're going to say, Lord, I know this is a dumb question, but no, he'll go, he's a father. Yes, 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 yes. And he looks at us like you'd look at your two-year-old. He goes, no, that ain't a dumb question, baby. You know. Come here. Yeah. Let me show Praise you. God. Yeah. This is what you, this is how this works. Oh, <laughs> ask. He gives to all liberally. That's right. yeah. and up, he, he's ready. He wants to show us. Yeah. He wants to be. And it'll be given him. Verse six. But let him ask in faith. Amen. Nothing wavering. Now this is a scripture that the devil quotes. <laughs> And uses against believers who don't understand it. See how quiet it got? Yes, sir. Hmm? He uses it. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. The, the devil likes to quote that verse. Don't let him think he'll receive anything. Don't let him think he'll receive anything. Up, 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 up. Now you wavered, you wavered. I forget it then, forget it. Forget it. You know you wavered. You know you did. You know it. I know it. You know it. Don't try to play like you didn't waver. You wavered. So you're not going to get anything. Don't even think you're going to get anything. <laughs> Did the devil quote scriptures to Jesus? Oh, yes. Yeah. Did he quote them the right way? No. no. He had it twisted up, trying to misapply it. Is that right? Yes. Trying to mislead, trying to tempt. So when the devil quotes a scripture to you, you should never take it seriously. Amen. 
He's quoting it out of context. He's twisting the real meaning of it. You should never take it seriously. Consider the source. Let not that man think he'll receive anything of the Lord. So, uh, you know, an, an unst- a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Okay, I'm going to help you out now. <laughs> uh, go, to, go to Mark, the ninth chapter, please. Oh, praise God. And get ready to shout. Thank you, Lord. Got so many scriptures here. I'm picking and choosing. <clears throat> Mark 9, we, we looked at this earlier in our study, but you're going to see something that's shouting ground. Hallelujah. Uh, in Mark 9, about verse 14, it tells the story of the, uh, uh, the man that brought his son to Jesus. And he was having seizures and fits. And he described it. And he, the man had brought his son to the disciples for them to minister to him and deliver, get him delivered. And, and they tried. And they didn't succeed. Right. No results. You know, just because somebody prayed for you and you didn't get it does not reveal the will of God. Amen. 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 Yeah, but I've had several people pray and I pray. And that don't prove it's not the will of God for you to have it. It just reveals for some reason, didn't receive. And so, in, uh, when Jesus came, uh, the father came to Jesus uh, of the child. And, and he said to Master, verse 17, I've brought my, my son to you, which has a dumb spirit. And he described all the, the things that happened. In verse 19, Jesus said, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Verse 21, he asked the father, how long is it to go since this came to him? He said, of a child. Verse 20, and then the father said, you know, if you can do anything, verse 22, have compassion on us and help us. He's trying to put it all on Jesus and say, it's up to you. But Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Now, what what part of your being do you believe with? Come on. Your heart, not your understanding. And verse 24, straightway the father of the child cried out. And what did he say? What did he say? I believe. Help my unbelief. What does that mean? Can you believe with the heart and doubt with the heart at the same time? No. No, you're either believing or you're doubting in your heart. So what's going on? What's going on? Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. And the next verse, Jesus said, Nah, you're wavering. You're wavering? And if you waver, don't even think you're going to get anything today. Uh-uh. No, no. That's not what he said. Nope. That's not how it went. Right. <laughs> <laughs> then what's going on? What happened? Lord, I believe. That came right out of his heart. Yes. 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 The Lord looked at it. See, he, he didn't understand. He, he's brought his son to the disciples. They did every prayer and every confession, everything they knew. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. He's thinking, well, maybe nothing can be done. Of course, you know the enemy's telling him that. He brings him to Jesus himself, and he's not any more uh, convinced in the beginning. And then then he says, if you can do something, have compassion on us. Help us, man. And Jesus looks at him and says, "Uh uh-uh. It's not if I can. If you'll believe, all things are possible to him that believe, come on, now you're standing there and Jesus is looking you in the eye and telling you this. You know what happened? That hit him 
Glory to God. And right out of his heart, he said, I believe. Oh, yeah, I do. And then something else hit him. Help my unbelief. Here's something that's a wonderful thing to know. I didn't, I didn't get this. Uh, I got this from the Lord through my father in the faith, Kenneth Hagin. He said, faith will work in your heart with thoughts of doubt in your head. Faith will work in your heart with thoughts of doubt in your head. Or feelings. Or any of that. Now you can't just yield to it. But when it comes to you. You got a choice. Just because thoughts come to you. And feelings come to you. That does not mean. You've chosen to believe that. In your heart. I told you you were going to like it. The enemy has robbed people. By misquoting and misapplying the scripture in James. Oh, you waver, you ain't going to receive anything. You waver, you're not going to receive anything. He's talking about in your heart, you stop believing and start doubting. You're doubting in your heart instead of believing in your heart. But no, this man says, I believe. Then immediately, something else is bugging him. Help my unbelief. What's he talking about? Jesus did not go into a long spill with him and say, no, 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 we got to get that fixed. You can't receive anything. No. As far as Jesus is concerned, we got it. We got what we need. All he heard was that first part. I believe. Help my unbelief. All he's got to do is stay in this gear in his heart and not let this stuff in his head change what's in his heart. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fighting the good fight of faith. What's involved in that? Thoughts, feelings. Suggestions, reasonings, reminders of failures and bad reports and every other thing. They will be brought to you. They will come to you. They will try to oppress you and permeate you and push in. And that's why Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. You can't control what comes to you. You can control what gets in you. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Glory to God. And even if you catch yourself having sat there and thought about the wrong thing for longer than you should, which is any time, what do you do? You, you, you catch yourself and you go, no, 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 no. I don't believe that. This is what I believe. Amen. And so you stay in faith. Yes. I said you stay in faith. Faith will work yes. in your heart, yes. even with thoughts and doubts and feelings in your head. Right. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. Don't let that sway your heart. Oh, it'll be there. Stuff will come and go. Are you kidding? Most people's heads. If their mind was a TV, if, if their forehead was a TV screen, and you could see what's going on in their mind, it would be too distracting. <laughs> I mean, it's like some kid with the remote changing the channel. I mean, it's just, you're like, whoa, 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 what's going on? You're over here, you're over there, you're up here, you're down there. <laughs> and that's not good. You need to learn to control your mind. But whether you can get something from God or not is not all based on you never having a wrong thought or a wrong feeling come to you, that's a perversion and distortion of Scripture. That's a lie of the enemy. You see it perfectly with this man right here. When Jesus looks at him and says, no, 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 don't try to put this on me now. If you can believe 
All things are possible to him that believes. I mean, faith comes by hearing and hearing. He has heard out of the mouth of the master. He's standing there looking at him in the face. Those words hit him, came into him, and his immediate heart response was, I believe, I believe, I believe. believe." believe. That's his heart. That's his heart. That's his heart. And you'll find this, this is a good uh, lesson to learn about being led by the Spirit. Amen. Again and again, when God gives you something, it's so clear, it's yeah. so real, it's right. in your heart, yeah. and then maybe 10 minutes later, all this stuff starts coming to your head, yeah. why it can't happen, what's wrong with it. Right. 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 Yeah. Don't, don't let that confuse you yeah. about what you got in your heart. Start with Tune that out. Turn that off. Casting down imaginations and every high. Go right back to the simplicity that's in Christ. What you know he told you and I believe I I don't have to see it. I don't have to know how it can happen. I don't have to understand it. I just believe it. I believe. Somebody say I believe. I believe. believe. Yeah but how in the world could that ever happen? I believe. believe. Yeah but there ain't no way. I believe. I don't have to know how. I believe. I believe. I believe. Then he says, help, help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. And I mean, the Lord didn't require one more thing out of him. Next thing you know, he casts the, the problems out of that, that boy, picks him up, hands him to his dad free. Hallelujah. He didn't need one more thing out of this man. Then it is true. Faith will work in your heart with thoughts of doubt bothering your head. Oh, can you say glory to God? Glory to God. Let's lift up our hands and thank him for this right now. Lord, we thank you. 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 Thank you. Thank you. you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Go ahead and stand up on your feet. I got a lot more that we could talk about, but I think we need to, that, that big tree just laid in your heart. And we need to let it lay there. Is that right? And get uh, established. Glory to God. Y'all come on, guys. Thanks be to God.